Isabel Van Spruce is the director of an anti-abortion group in the UK called March for Life UK. She was arrested for praying silently outside an abortion clinic in Birmingham. Again, she was praying silently. Not only was she not harassing anyone, she wasn't even speaking. She wasn't carrying a sign. She wasn't doing anything, which isn't to say that speaking or carrying a sign should be, you know, causes for arrest in a civilized country. But here we, here we are. She was actually charged with four counts of failing to comply with a public spaces protection order for praying in her head. So in other words, she violated the buffer zone around the abortion clinic. You might call it an anti-free speech zone. It's an order that was put in place on September 7th, 2022, making it illegal to protest by, quote, engaging in an act of approval or disapproval, including prayer and protest in a buffer zone around the clinic, unquote. Now, they write it like that so that it sounds like it might be fair because nobody can protest on either side of the equation, right? However, let's think this through. The abortion clinic itself has a side. The abortion clinic is in favor of abortions because they perform them, so we can say that. And therefore, you don't need people protesting outside it in favor of its existence. It already exists. So therefore, the only people they are silencing are those who would in some way be opposed to it, those who would be pro-life. Now, um, you know, this is a country that claims to be free speech that in certain ways has been more in favor of free speech throughout history than other countries throughout the West that kind of led the way. No longer does it do that. The similar situation exists over in Ireland with regard to these buffer zones, buffer of a certain type of speech. Now that order, it goes on to say, quote, this includes but is not limited to graphic, verbal, or written means, prayer, or counseling, unquote. So in other words, uh, you simply can't exist in this zone at all. But even if the woman who is entering the abortion clinic might choose to have a, a change of heart, might actually go over to this group. I mean, over here in the US, outside of some abortion clinics, you'll kind of find a group across the street who stand there and they pray. And yes, they, they sometimes hold signs. And you'll have some women who are going to enter the abortion clinic and they go and they speak to them and they, they hear what they have to say and they hear about different options that are available to them that they may not have heard about. And this is one of the things that takes place. Well, what's happening in England and Ireland here is that entire dynamic is removed from the equation because there's no there's no choice. It, it's funny because these are the people who claim to be pro-choice. Like that's what they call themselves, not pro-abortion, but pro-choice. But what they're doing here is removing any of these sort of the instruments that would inform the woman that there is another option. Because when women, by and large, go for abortions, they do so because they think there's no other choice. That they think that due to financial reasons or what have you, that they're, they're budged into a corner. What those people, those, those protesters are trying to do is say, actually, no, you're not. There, there are different options. But this woman who stood there in silent prayer was arrested and it just seems I think it is. It's 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 seriously evil to arrest someone for praying. And that's the kind of persecution that we've been talking about on this channel that when I talk about how Christian persecution is increasing throughout the West and, and so many people, especially those who are more inclined toward, you know, being secular or atheistic, will say, Well, there's there's no there's no Christian persecution and it's like, well, Increasingly, it's becoming difficult to even ignore. As you see, people, this was, woman was a, was a Catholic woman, but p people who are arrested for, for praying, for exerting their faith. It's like, you can be a Christian, but as long as you don't live as one. You know, as long as, as, long as we don't know that you are, then you can. You can be a Christian behind, behind closed doors. Like, well, but not if you actually, you know, try to make any decisions on the basis of your faith. As you see in regards to gay marriages, or in regards to if you run a bed and breakfast and you don't want to have you know, two men share the same room, uh, you're not allowed to make decisions as if you were a Christian. These are the kinds of things that I mean. And I think this is going to get worse going forward if more people don't speak out about it. And over in England, it is already somewhat socially unacceptable to be a an active Christian. And this is the the sort of consequence of that.
Wait, don't leave yet. I have more videos for you to watch. One of them is recommended by YouTube because you know how well it has built a profile of you. Yeah, and the other one's my most recent video so that you haven't already seen. So you can find something that you might enjoy. Also, there are links in the description below that'll help you to support the channel if you're so willing. And really, who doesn't want one of these mugs?